Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. It's good to see all of you here. This is a day that uh, has been a long time coming, right? So good to be together for worship this morning. We're going to get started with Come Now is the Time to Worship. Would you rise up with us? We're going to sing together. Now 
Well, Rob stole my two opening lines, so <laughs> good morning and welcome. I'm so glad you're here today. Please feel free to sit down. Those of you who are joining us online, good morning. We love you. We're so glad you're joining us today. And fingers crossed, everybody downstairs, good morning. Just wondering if we'd be able to hear him or not. Oh, yes, I'm getting a thumbs up. All right, good morning. Wow, we're here. Good job, guys. You have no idea all of the hard work that has gone into this. So um, thank you, everyone, for all of your behind the scenes. You are appreciated for sure. Great to see everyone today. My name is Amanda Hoffman. I work with the children. I work in the finance department. You'll probably see me around a little bit. So um, it's really nice to meet all of you today. Last night was an exciting event. Light the Night was here, and of course, everything is a little different with COVID, and we're adapting and making it all work. God is good. It was outside, and Mr. Galvez will be giving a more detailed report tomorrow or next Sunday. It's a little short notice to try to get some stuff together to let you know. So next Sunday, we're going to get to see some pictures and see how that went. I have the privilege of doing announcements, in case you couldn't tell, and we've got a great way for everybody to get involved here and welcome a new member of our congregation, Mario, who I can't wait to meet. I keep hearing wonderful things about him, is turning 50, or did turn 50, and we are celebrating, going to do a drive-by, <laughs> going to do a drive-by celebration today at 3 p.m., so we're going to meet at the post office on Harrison at 3, join the caravan, drive by, honk, wave. We'll let our new brother know how much we love him. 
There is a virtual moms group again, COVID, thank you. November 1st, which is today at 6.30. You can get in touch with Gretchen if you would like to be involved. I'll point over here. <laughs> and she can get you all the info so you can get logged on and in. There will also be virtual prayer meetings. We don't want to lose out on prayer together. Tuesdays from 7 to 8 by Zoom. Feel free to call the office. And the best way right now is to continue calling either Mosaic or TBC's phone numbers um, until we get things situated and get down to one with our new name, which, what was that new name again? Oh, I keep trying, and they're just, oh, I'll just have to keep waiting, I guess. <laughs> Fuel is our youth and young adult group. They meet on Thursdays from 6 to 8. Pastor Solomon is over on this side. Feel free to contact him if you would like more information on that. There will be a Christmas choir happening. Thinking about Christmas already. If you've been to the stores, they're already all set up for it. So Christmas choir, feel free to contact Jennifer Mullen about that. She has stuff here for you and all ready to go with that. So find her. The new communication, the website, the Facebook page, the name, it's all coming and it's in the works, but for now, keep referring to the separate pages. This goes with giving as well. A new name will be announced today, but don't make your checks out to it yet. We're not quite legally officially there yet. So hang on to the old names for now and we'll let you know. We'll keep you posted when we're going to actually do the melding of that and the changing of it. They've been keeping it a secret, so we haven't been able to do any of this yet. So, new signs will be coming. The ramp out front there will be started, and well, it's started. It will be finished, so hang on for that. And Operation Christmas Child, which is something near and dear to both of our congregation's hearts, our congregation heart, that's going to be happening this year. And again, COVID, we're going to do it online. So if you're not comfortable going out to the store or if you're getting really good at this technology thing, Operation Christmas Child, go online. You can build your box right there, send it off. We've got a goal of 30 boxes. So I think we can handle that. I think we got this. It is so wonderful to be with you today. Pastor Solomon is going to come and open our service in prayer. All right, let's pray. Uh, Father, we just want to uh, turn our thoughts and our hearts to you. You know, uh, each of us here brought in different things that were on our mind. Some uh, messed up the clocks. Others are running late, uh, like myself, for the time sw switch the service. And we just want to ask for your special grace now to put all those other things aside and uh, settle our hearts and anchor our hearts in you and lean back and worship you and listen to your word, remind ourselves of the promises you've given us, the hope that we have, the calling you've put out in front of us, be encouraged by one another. We just want to commit this entire service, not to our glory, doing something new, but for your glory. And Lord, we want to acknowledge that we're here not to bring honor to ourselves or to what we're doing, but to point all the honor to you, to what you've done through history and to what you're doing in this generation right now among us. We surrender ourselves to you and we surrender this hour as a token of that surrender. We love you, and we lift it to you in your Son, our Master Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's continue by worshiping the Lord together. Will you please stand?
good from up here, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you never know who's going to show up during COVID, and you are here, so congratulations! So glad that you're here today. So encouraged to be together. What a beautiful thing, those up back there and up there and online and various places. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So great is our God, and He is worthy to be praised. And bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and let's not forget His benefits. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Praise the Lord, all the nations. Extol Him, all peoples. For great is the steadfast love towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Aren't you grateful for things that are eternal, right? Things change in our planets. Things change in our bodies. Things change in the nations. But God is consistent forever. He is good to all generations. And great is his faithfulness. And he's doing something new that is based in something old. His love for the nations, his heart for his people. And we have no idea what is yet in store for us in eternity. But yet today we stand in faith believing his promises, receiving his grace, and transmitting his life to those around us. So this is a good day, friends, and again, so great to be with you. I'd have you get up and give high fives and hugs, but we're not going to do that. But make sure that you're connected with one another as best you can this day. Amen? Amen. Okay. Well, as you know, this has been a process to bring us to this day, right? And so we've been asking primarily two questions. The first and most important question is, 
<laughs> God, are you in this? Okay, is that a good question? It's a good question. So God, are you in this? Will you show us clearly that this is what you would have for us? And that's the first question we've been asking for over a year. And then the second question, of course, is will we indeed be better together? And so we have been wrestling with those questions for a long time and come to a conclusion that number one, yes, God is in this. And number two, yes, we believe we are better together. And that's a good thing. Amen. So as time rolls out, we'll see what God will do in us, what God will do through us, and how he's going to impact the nations because of the faithfulness of those who say, yes, God, we will embrace you, we will follow you, regardless of where you go, because we trust you. And that is a beautiful thing. So we're going to have some more prayer, and this, this prayer is twofold. So one, it's going to be prayer for me and prayer for my wife as it's, we're kind of being installed, so to speak, on this new day. So we're going to pray for us, and we're going to thank God, and we're going to ask for his blessing because we need God's blessing. We say amen to that, right? So we're going to pray this way. And at the end of that, so it's a pray, prayer of installation and then a prayer of dedication or consecration. And I'm going to pray for all of us and what God is going to do during this new chapter, during this new season of our life together. So I'm going to invite those who are uh, here, uh, part of our launch team, we're calling it now, the Leadership Council. If you guys would come on up and my wife would come on up, that would be great. And we're going to have a time of prayer. I've asked two guys to pray. Come on up, folks. Come on up in here. And when they pray, I want you to pray for us as well. Because, as you know, this is a, a big endeavor, right? And we need God's grace to fill our hearts. We need God's grace to work in us. We need God's grace to overwhelm us. We need God's grace to go forward. And so we, we are praying today for those things, and um, so we're going to do that. So whomever is going to pray, we'll, I'm, yeah. I'm going first. In honor of our pastor and his wife in this new endeavor, uh, if you can, if you'd like to stand with me as we pray for them. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm reminded in Ephesians that God reminds us that he is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than all we could ever ask or imagine, and, uh, and he also, through the Holy Spirit, gives power to his church. And here we are today for such a time as this. We want to give him the glory, and uh, we're experiencing a new endeavor for all of us. This is just the beginning, and uh, he will continue to do this uh, through our entire endeavor. We want to pause and recognize and basically install Pastor Dave, uh, he has faithfully served Mosaic for 13 years, but in this new endeavor, we want to recognize that and set him apart as a special servant of the Lord. So if you'd pray with me as we pause. Dear Heavenly Father, through your providence, you have brought us together for such a time as this, and we want to lift up Pastor Dave to honor him for the service and the dedication he has shown you through his many years of ministry in the last 13 years at Mosaic Church. Now you have drawn us together as three different churches with him as the lead pastor. Father, we ask you to give him assurance, give him honor, uh, give him the power and authority that a pastor of one of your churches deserves. Mm -hmm. Father, we ask you to give him encouragement, and in those days when he needs that, Father, by your spirit, I just ask that you would, um, your spirit would minister to him at that point of need. So, Father, strengthen, empower, refresh him, do all the things uh, for him that a special servant of yours deserves. And then, Father, as we pray for him and as our spiritual leader, I also want to lift up us as a congregation for us to be the kinds of followers you would have us be. He's leading our flock, and Father, I pray that each one of us, by the power of your Spirit, would serve in that capacity to be followers, to give him the authority and to 
uh, help him in the process of leading this church. So, Father, for each one of us as this new congregation comes together, I ask you to, for by your spirit, that you would empower us and give us the discernment, the wisdom to be those kinds of followers that you would have us be, first of Jesus and then of Pastor Dave and his leadership. The Word also shares with us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we know that our God and our Jesus is the true shepherd. But we know that here with us here on earth, we have been given people who have been called and have a special calling. It says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And we ask, Father God, that you continue to offer your rod and your staff to your servant, David. As he guides this community, Father God, with your staff of comfort, that he guide this community, Father God, with your staff of strength, that he wield it, Father God, against the enemies, inside and out, Father God, so that he will continue to be your servant, Father God, that he would protect this flock as you protect your flock, that he would protect his family as you protect your family, Father God. Scripture reminds us, who builds a work without measuring the cost? And we know, Father God, that Dave and Gretchen have measured the cost of this new build to glorify you, Father God. And so we turn them over to you, Father God, trusting that you have their best in mind, Father God. There's a cost to self in this endeavor. There's a cost to family in this endeavor. There's a cost to relationship, Lord, but it has been measured out. And we know, Father God, that through your countenance, through your grace, and through your mercy, you will continue to protect Dave and Gretchen throughout this process. So we ask that you give your grace and mercy, strength and patience in abundance mm -hmm. for their marriage, for their relationship, for the relationship with each other and the relationship with you, Lord. Mm -hmm. That their cup would overflow and that you, Father God, may be glorified. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Okay, okay thank you both. And then we're going to pray, okay? We're going to pray one more time. So God, here we are, Lord. Your people from different tribes and different places. God, we believe that this is your idea. God, we know that this is for us, but it's not about us. Amen. God, it's about your name. It's about your glory, God. It's about your kingdom, Lord. It's about your grace. It's about who you are. And God, as we join together and endeavor to move forward, may your faithfulness be seen. May your glory be be known. Amen. May your face be here and shine upon us, God. Yes. May your word be proclaimed strongly, God. May our worship be um, hearty and heartfelt. May relationships be built up. May people come to faith and return back to faith. May those who have been separated from one another, God, those relationships be mended. May missionaries be sent to the corners of the earth. May this place be a testimony to Rockford and this region that there is a God in heaven who can bridge people together. May they see your work and your word happening, God. That people say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, that your name would be great because you are great. And so God, you see us and you are here today. You hear these words. 
Make your glory known from this place. Do your work in our heart. Do your work in this place. Do your work in this community. God, do your work in our nation and into the world. God, may your will be done and we will praise you. 10,000 upon 10,000 upon 10,000 of years. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for your continued faithfulness to us. We give you praise. We dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be glorified in all these things. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Shine forth from this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sneak in here. They didn't know I was going to do this, but... Um, I've just been reflecting on this whole process and the song that keeps going through my head is God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide, hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. And so I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Bob Carlson and Dave Spooner for all the work that they have done this whole year, the time, the prayer, the fasting, the um, meetings, all the things that they have done to continue to seek God's face, to continue to work with each of us to try to move forward. And the verse that we have um, often used is found in Proverbs. It's, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And so I have a picture here. Yeah, help me. <laughs> Thank you. I have a picture here that has that verse and then the team's signatures. Oh, wow. One for Bob That's and amazing. one for Dave. Oh my word. And then Gretchen. Oops, we have flowers for you. Oh. So thank you, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Go ahead, Jan. Be seated. <clears throat> I'm going to stick this right here. We are going to dismiss the kids as well. Yeah. So kids, you are dismissed. There's some already downstairs. Well, there's been a lot of people who have worked really hard <laughs> this last week, from tech teams to staff folks to children's teams to lots of teams. And we're going to continue to work hard. So let's, let's give them a round of applause, all those who have just been working so, so hard. <clears throat> to make this happen. <laughs> so I don't think we could have picked a worse day to merge churches, right? We're doing this on a blustery November day in the middle of a pandemic with heightened restrictions a few days before a contentious election and to throw in there it's a time change day right perfect perfect right perfect time to merge churches together now on the other hand I don't think we could have picked a better day to merge churches because doing this today says we believe the mission of God continues to move forward in every circumstance and especially when things are difficult. Doing this today says that we believe the gospel of Christ is the hope of the world for transformation and healing and wholeness and peace. Doing this today says that we believe that the fellowship of the saints is worth personal sacrifice. 
doing this today says that we believe we are better together. It is the worst of times. It is the best of times. And you are saying that today, regardless of what's happening in our community, regardless of what's happening in the world, we believe the gospel is important. Fellowship and connection is important. We believe that we will move forward together. And it is a beautiful and wonderful thing. And if God can merge churches during this time and make it Futural, uh, excuse me, few, fruitful, then God is indeed in this. And these verses are printed in the prayer room. And if you have not been in the prayer room, you need to go into the prayer room and pray and look at the walls. And on one wall is a set of verses, on another wall is a set of verses. And this is what one set says from Ephesians chapter 3 that God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Right? Far more abundantly that we can ask or think according to his power, right? It's not about our power and our strategy and our thoughts. We need God's power to do what we cannot, right? God is the only one that can bring from death to life. From those who are far from him to those who are close to him. To bring us into family and to give us a new home. God is the one who can do this. So today is a new day. Today we get a new name. But with these two things, we are connected to, a, to an eternal message. A new day, a new name, connected to an in eternal message and a sacred mission. Methods and ministries will change, but the message and the mission continue to move forward. Amen? So it's a new day. Are you glad you're here? God. So this is our new day that is built upon the foundation of thousands and tens of thousands of days of faith and faithfulness, of service and sacrifice, of celebrations and salvations, of risks and rewards of perseverance and prayer and proclamations. This is a new chapter for our churches, built upon the chapters that have already been written. 140 years, 13 years, 8 years. And then God is pleased to bring us together. So this is a continuation of what He has already been doing. And you and I are, we are a part of this. It's a new chapter for our churches, and God is reconfiguring a new body out of three pieces with distinctive histories and flavors and ages and colors and backgrounds and languages as a testimony, right? to this community here in Rockford region and to the world, that the hand of the Lord is mighty and that nothing is impossible for him and that he should be honored and worshipped and feared and proclaimed to the ends of the earth through all eternity. 
Now, out in various places, you'll see one of these. And I encourage you to grab one of these if you have not done so on your way out to remember this day. The whole verse goes like this. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their effort. For if either fails, his companion can lift him up. But pity the person, pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person also keep alone keep warm? And if somebody overpowers one person, two can resist him. And here it is. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Right? Do you like that? Right? We are here to help one another. Right? And will there be pullings and will there be weight and will there be tension as we are called and doing what God asks us to do? Yes. But as we are tied and woven together, and you can see it here depicted in, in this fabric, that there is strength that comes when we join together. And God loves it when people dwell together in unity, right? There is strength there. There is power there. There is a multiplying effect when we come together. Can we serve God individually? We could say yes to that, right? But Christianity isn't a solo or silo religion, right? God puts us intentionally in relationship. You do recognize that God himself is a trinity, right? Three in one. And when he created us, we were created in his image. And he creates us for community because he saves us for community and for connection and for fellowship because indeed we are stronger and better together. That's why having right relationships with one another is important. And we can say amen to that. That's why there are so many one another's in scripture. Love one another, forgive one another, encourage one another, pray for one another. Christianity is best lived out in community. And we are doing that this day, which is new. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. So as you take these cards, put it up somewhere on your mirror or on your dashboard of your car or somewhere that you can re remember and then that you can contribute and say, I want to be a part of this and pray that God would do his work in us and through us in this place. So today is our new day. And today, the new name is revealed. I know. The moment you've been waiting for. I know after I say this name, you're not going to remember anything else I talk about today. So I had to get all that stuff in in the beginning. <laughs> the new name. So I'm going to tell you about the process, and I'm glad that it's going to be out. Oh, uh, you, are, you are ready. They're not, don't show it yet. He's going to wait for my cue, okay? We have to build up to this a little bit, okay? So there has been a process Right? So we had a crack team of two marketing experts leading the charge. And there was around, I don't know, 200, 250 names, some suggested to us, to them, and they had to, to go through all of these names, and they went through them one by one by one. And the hopes that we could be narrowing these things down. And so they used criterium to try to determine what names we should strongly consider, mildly consider, and we can put to the side. And so they asked themselves this question. Number one, we want the new name to be meaningful, right? That makes sense, right? So we want it to be <laughs> meaningful. We also want it to be easy to remember. So they're looking, okay, it needs to be meaningful, it needs to be easy to remember, and we wanted it not to be complicated, so not complicated. Meaningful, easy to remember, not complicated, not cutesy, right? Something that will have some lasting ability. That's the fourth thing. And not common, 
Okay, so those were the five criteria in which they were sorting, uh, sorting through these things. That, that would be meaningful, easy to remember, not complicated, not cutesy, not common. We didn't want to have the same name as the, street, the church down the street. Okay, so they were sorting through all of these things. And they came down to having five. Right? And so we had five finalists to look through. Now the team of two was expanded out to 12. So there were two couples from each congregation. Okay, So four folks from Mosaic, four folks from TBC, four folks from uh, Myanmar Christian Fellowship. And so that group, we literally prayed, I literally fasted about this. God, what would you say to us and how can we be identified? And so that group met, and we talked, and we looked, and we went down to two, and then the two went down to one, right? And now I want to tell you about names. You guys are ready right there, weren't you? Is it going to happen? This is kind of fun, okay? <laughs> Have any of you ever named your children before? Right? We name them, Right? And so we have two daughters, and so our, our oldest daughter's name is Anna, and our youngest daughter's name is Deborah. And my wife and I prayed about these names. We did have male names picked out as well, just in case we didn't know, okay, if they're going to be a boy or a girl. And we named them, and we called them by name. And as Anna grew, and as Deborah grew, they grew into that name. And they became and they embodied that name. And so the name that we have, we will grow into it, right? We will embody it. And it will be us, okay? So I'm going to do a countdown. That might be the thing. I'm going to start at a thousand. Ha <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I will count it down, and then we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to point out some things about it, okay? Okay, this is getting, this is getting hyped up right now. <laughs> some hype, some hype music. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Okay. Here we are. No, we should count down together. Why don't we count down from 10 together, right? And then once we hit zero, then you hit it. Ready? Here we go. Let's say this together. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hit it. There it is. I am so glad you're, cap you're clapping right there, okay? So glad. Cross Point, there it is, Cross Point Church, okay? So let me talk about this, all right? So here's the deal. <laughs> the cross is the point where we are reconciled to God, right? The cross is the point where our sins are forgiven. The cross is the point where we receive new life. The cross is the hope of the world. And I like this, and you see this, okay? Hopefully you can tell. So cross point, you see cross is in, in, in dark letters. Church, so people know what we are, right? And then this logo here has four different colors, and that was intentional, right? That God would bring to us, every tribe, every language, every people, every nation. Do you see that? That we're not all coming the same, but we're coming from different places. And so God draws us to himself, okay? The arrow's going in, and then God sends us out to represent him to the nations of the world. 
Don't you like that? There is a drawing together, and then they're from all different shades and all different places and all different flavors and all different languages. He does so in the cross, and then he transforms us and then sends us out to represent him to the world, that we will, will introduce real people to a real God, right? By knowing Jesus and making him known. Amen? All right, so there you have it. And these, these, uh, this logo, you're going to see it this next week. The, the guys are going to be putting out signs out here in various places. And there's going to be propaganda that we're going to be handing out to, to us all. So that is who we are saying we are, right? Come on now, come on. <clears throat> May God be glorified in this, right? May be glorified in these Things, and that together we can say from Revelation chapter 5, Worthy are you who takes the scroll and who opens its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God. From every tribe, right? Every language, every people, every nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests uh, to our God, that they shall reign on the earth. So it is a new day. It is, we have now, this is our new day. This is our new name. And coupled with that, we have our eternal message. And this is easy to remember as well. You hopefully know this. It's in the Bible, right? John 3, guess what I'm going to say? You know this one, right? (laughs) For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God. This is... the initiation... For God, who initiates his connection with us? It's God who does that. For God, initiating the source of all things, the source of eternity, the source of life. For God, the initiation. So loved the motivation. God initiated with us. So loved, he's motivated to move Towards us. Towards not just us, but the world. God, the initiator, so loved the motivation for the world, which is the application. All peoples, all tribes, all nations. The gospel is just not for you. Say amen to that right there. It's for you, but it's not about you. It is for us. So God so loved the world that he gave, which is the demonstration, right? He just didn't say, well, here I am. There you are. He says, I love you. So therefore, let me demonstrate my love by giving his one and only son, which is the salvation, right? He demonstrated it. By giving. Right? He didn't say, well, good luck to you all. He says, I love you. The world. So to demonstrate his love, he gave his only begotten son. While we were still sinners, Christ, what? Died for us. Right? That's salvation. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him. That's the invitation. An invitation to believe. This God who loves the whole world demonstrated by 
giving His one and only Son, that whoever that you're invited to believe should not perish, which is the implication. Should not perish, which we rightly deserve, right? All have what? Sinned and fallen short of the perfection and the glory of this God who initiates, who loves, who gives, who calls. But if we believe in His Son, we have salvation on His invitation, by His motivation, by His initiation and His demonstration. We will not perish, but have eternal life, which is glorification and exaltation. That again, we will turn back to praise God. So we have a new day, and today is a new day, right? Built upon what God has been doing through all time, drawing people to Himself. It is a new day for us, it is a new name for us. But it's an eternal message, an ancient message. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. That whoever, wherever, whenever believes on Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's the good news of the Gospel. We say amen to that. That message continues going forward. Even though the method may change, the name may change, the message goes forward. And we have a sacred mission. A sacred mission. Now, I'm sure you spent lots of time reading through the bylaws. Isn't that fun reading? Right? You guys have read it all. I should hear laughter right there. I, I, I don't think you probably did, okay? But right in the first part of that thing, there is a mission statement. And... I, I, I did a series in the book of Romans, and as I was going to that right in the beginning, starting out, I came across this verse. Then I said, if I ever have an opportunity to write a new mission statement, it would be based in this verse. And this is Romans chapter 1, verse 5, which says, we exist... Or the Apostle Paul is talking about his ministry, but in our context, we exist to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations. Did you catch that? Can you go back to the logo, please? It works really well with this logo. If you can go back to that, that would be fantastic. I know you want to see it again, right? To bring about the obedience of faith. And I look at it as a cross. We're going in to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations. I want you to know this. And we're going to talk about this in the next three weeks. I'm going to focus on a, a part of each one of these things. What are we doing as a church? We are here to bring about the obedience of faith. Do you like that? Okay. It's about being in faith, but we're developing it. It's a process word. This is what we do to bring about the obedience of faith. It's more than just knowing the things and the truth of the gospel and of the Bible. It is living the gospel and the things of the Bible. Obedience of faith. Because without application, we just have knowledge. And knowledge just puffs up, but love builds up, right? So we as a church are going to be bringing about, continuing bringing about the obedience of faith. Now why do we do that? For the sake of his name. Did you catch that? To bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name. Ultimately, in the end of the day, our lives, this church is about God and his name, right? Not about an individual, not about a location, not about a congregation, but about God, right? For the sake of His name, God be glorified in my living. God be glorified in my learning. God be glorified in this 
heart and in our congregation. To bring about the obedience of faith. Why? For the sake of His name. Where? <laughs> Among all the nations. Right? Where do the nations start, by the way? Two doors down. One door down. I often hear people, and especially young people, that talk about, you know, I want to win the world for Christ. Often my response is, then start with your neighbor. Right? We start in our Jerusalem. We start where we are, in Rockford. Does Rockford need more of Jesus? Think? Are there lots of people who live here in this town? Right? Yeah. We are here to represent the king. And it starts here in this town, and we have some work to do. But it doesn't end here, but it expands over to different places. Maybe we'll even talk to people in Wisconsin, right? Or Iowa. Or Minnesota. Or other places. And it expands. The gospel is not an American gospel. It's a global gospel. It extends to the nations. What are we doing? Bringing about the obedience of faith. Why are we doing it? For the sake of His name. Where are we doing it? Among all the nations. So I want us to think beyond these four walls and praying about this and processing what God is doing here. I'm reminded that it's just not about here. It's bigger than that. And the sense that God wants to empower us to reach people that are beyond this place. And it is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful calling. It's a sacred mission. So this is our new day. This is our new name. It is our ancient or eternal message. And we have a sacred mission. And we get to do this together. Right? Together. Different locations, different educations, different languages, different backgrounds. I think God is pleased in this. Right? He is pleased that you said, I'm here, come in, I want to be a part. And we'll look back on this day and we'll look back on what God has done and we'll say, glory to God in the highest. He is worthy of all praise and glory and honor and all nations. Do I know all that God's going to do? No. Right? I'll know more next week. I'll know more two years from now. I'll know more two decades from now. We will know more 200 years from now. Right? Let's take the time that we've been given to connect with Him and to make His name great among the nations. So the methods will change but the message and the mission will remain the same. With the presence of God and the persistence of prayers of the saints, we join our forces together to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of His name among all the nations. And I hope you're in, right? I'm going all in. Asking you to go all in. God, whatever we need to do to see that happen. Don't lose sight of that goal. Obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations. And we will do this together because I do believe we are better together. And let God be glorified in this place. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are going to participate in communion together. And we're doing this as a remembrance and as a community. And so we've had communion in our other locations. We're going to have communion here together. I'm asking for Pastor Solomon 
and Pastor Key, if they both come up here, that would be great. And Pastor Solomon is going to read um, the communion pastor, uh, passage for us. Pastor Key is going to pray in Burmese. Thank you very much. And I will lead us in communion as a symbolic act that we are together in Christ. Amen? We are together in Christ. And so, Pastor Solomon, when you're ready, go ahead and read this passage. Sure, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get that mic. Let's pray for together. ชิมเนตเตปาเจสุรากุชิมมาเรปาบยาอเนเนอะยะยะกะเนปุสังเปเรกุรอชิตอตาติมิมยาตินิยามากุรอกุวะปยุโกกวยปุอะตวนอะย
Jesus, we believe that your, your cross is the point of reconciliation. And on this new day, we say we believe. Bind us together in your blood by cords that cannot be broken. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive the cup together. So we're going to conclude our service with um, a song that pretty much makes me cry every time I sing it. And so we're going to sing this. We have two, right? We're going to do two? Right. Thank you. We're going to do two songs. And so listen to the words. Sing along. And we're going to rejoice. And then once service is concluded, take time to in uh, intermix. Take time to connect with one another. And continue to pray. And you'll see changes around the building. Outside on State Street here, you'll see some, some changes. And it's a beautiful thing to be together. So let's sing. Bless 
sing in honor and glory. Is he worthy of this? He Beginning and 
your God and all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing one more. Yes, how great is our God. So sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. He's our God. He's our God. He's our God. He's our God. Give Him your praise today. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Amen. God bless and be with you this week. Walk in His name. Be his all week. Amen. And that's it.